Hi, everybody. Rochelle Jones, Grief Recovery. So somebody said something to me recently that uh, it brought me to tears. You ever have someone just say something that absolutely brings you to tears for a good reason? Um, I felt so heard and cared for and loved and acknowledged and accepted. You ever have one of those moments? I'm positive you have hopefully had at least one. But if you've had at least one, I'm positive you remember how you felt in that moment. And so that's the interesting thing is we have a uh, a head memory that remembers the details, the facts, who said what, when, what was the context, what was going on. And then we have a heart memory as well, which is how we remember feeling. And that can encompass a lot of, for example, I had a, a bully in, I have a massive headache. I think I have a sinus headache. I never had that before. I don't think I, I've had a sinus infection before, but I think I have one today and it's miserable. Um, I'm miserable in some ways. Uh, it affects my concentration a little bit. How annoying is that? Anyway, when we, I had a, a bully in second grade, someone who just wasn't kind regularly. The thing is, I remember this person based on how I remember feeling when I was around the person, not for any other reason. I don't remember words. I don't remember exchanges. I just remember, ah, that person wasn't kind to me. Okay. So we remember how, how we were left feeling and that's our heart memory. A lot of times as children, you know, we don't have memories as babies. Most of us very rarely will I have someone who remembers maybe, maybe two or three times in the several people I've ever worked with, does someone remember something from babyhood and young childhood? Young meaning three, four, five, five sometimes. Anyway, babies usually remember how someone left them feeling. So they may not understand the language, but they understand who feels safe, which environment feels safe. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean, for example, I had a uh, a little cousin, his mom, my aunt is actually the baby's mom, my aunt, we're close in age. So the baby um, is, was, you know, a baby when I was already an adult having my own children. And um, this particular child, when uh, they were terrified of me, they were just terrified. And we don't know why. We don't know why. There's the only baby I've ever known who was afraid of me as a baby. We didn't know. Was it my dark hair? We had no idea. But the baby remembered how she felt. And it could have been, you know, something out of my control that happened at the house. Was someone shouting? Was the dog barking? I think we had two dogs at that time that that child was a baby. So we just had to trust that one day she'll realize that Rochelle's a safe person, but there's something that spooked her. And so we just kind of went with it. And, and respected that. I respected that as a baby and forced her to come to me and let me hold her, that kind of thing, right? So we have a heart memory that doesn't always come with words and, and pictures. It's a feeling. So heart memory, going back to this person, I do look at this. So if you are familiar with grief recovery method work, if you've been through one of my classes or someone else's, uh, maybe you're one of the, the few people who got a book and did the work on your own, and that's possible. It was written, the book was written that way. But you know what this word completion means, right? So I do a completion every single morning. Most mornings, I do a completion. It sort of slowed a little bit where the intensity has calmed down a little bit. But I have I live in a life where um, it's very intense in my home. And um, we're still in the sort of early learning phases about it. So um, we still have really intense and painful moments around here on the daily. So one situation usually encompasses several painful moments connected to different people. So I stay up on my work regularly so that my heart memory, my heart is not burdened by its heavy memories. Anyway, so I have a couple of specialists whom I go to 
for my own completion work to be my heart with ears like I do for all of you. And one of those at this moment, I'm talking about Casey. So I just posted something in my story, Casey McCoy, or you can find her on Instagram, Grief Recovery Casey. But Casey McCoy, she said something the other day um, after I completed my grief work. And so in one of my completions, I mentioned something um, that I believe I have experienced for years <laughs> called Cassandra syndrome or the Cassandra phenomenon. And uh, it was just like a way for me to describe what I had been, uh, uh, what I believe I'd been experiencing as I was talking about how I was feeling and doing my recovery work. So the next time I get with her or the next time or two, I get with her to do my completion work. She said, Oh, I've read all about this Cassandra syndrome or the Cassandra phenomenon because I care about you and what's important to you is important to me. So I read about it. I wanted to know a little bit more about what you're experiencing and what that could feel like to try to understand it and feel it a little deeper. And it paused me in my tracks and I just burst into tears, a gentle tear. And it was purely because I felt loved and I felt cared for. And I'm wondering if you've had that type of experience where someone left you feeling so loved and so cared for, so accepted and seen and heard that you just, it made a huge impact on you. It helped you. It was precious and important. And I like to um, be a gatherer for myself of moments that feel good, right? Uh, the, life can be a little bit difficult and challenging. So I want you to try to find who is one of those people in your life who left you feeling heard, seen, accepted, acknowledged, cared for by doing that little extra mile. I, I mean, I had had that thought before, if only I could get someone who understands, it, at least tries to, to hear, what I am going through, um, but like I know I would do that for someone else, but I felt conflicted to have that hope that someone would do that for me. I felt, um, well, conflicting feelings is grief, and I thought, well, Rochelle, that's not fair to create that expectation on any other person. At the same time, I was wishing it would happen, right? That's what we do. And um, I wasn't going to make a request or anything like this because it's, you know, people will do what they want. Um, and it's not anybody else's responsibility to, to deal with what I'm going through. It's mine. The hope was still there secretly in my heart. And um, I had Casey say this to me that, well, it's true friends care about what you care about. And that I heard was source of pain. It was important to you. So I read about it and I studied it out a little bit. And uh, so I could be more present for you and more available. And that really touched my heart. So I'm curious who that's been for you. And you can share in the comments if you'd like who stuck out to you for that type of reason. Maybe you don't feel safe to um, say that out loud, and that's perfectly fine, but know it in your heart. And if you can, somehow thank that person, acknowledge that person, because that would be a, a source of love that belongs to them. Your gratitude is a source of love that belongs to them. And I would ask you to consider delivering that if you can. I get that sometimes we keep, we don't know how to contact people um, or people have died, you know, and we can't deliver all of that directly to that person. And that's what the grief recovery method is useful for as well, is um, helping you deliver it indirectly in a way that still leaves you feeling complete. Um, but uh, if the person is alive, you can contact them. You um, have a relationship where you can reach out and send them a note. I would ask you to consider delivering this good pocket of love that belongs to them. It's a shared moment between the two of you, and it's a shared joyful moment that, that exists between the two of you. And I would say to deliver that message. I would also say, well, I'm going to stop there. Um, 
deliver the messages that are positive, that are full of love or gratitude, that leave someone else feeling acknowledged for just being different, for going above and beyond. Deliver that message because they deserve to know. And guess what? If I die at the end of today or tomorrow and I didn't deliver that message, she may never know how important that was to me. She may never know just how cared for I felt and loved I felt. So I was able to tell her in the moment, of course. Um, and I have other people too in my life. Uh, this was just a new one. And I thought we need to be reminded to share these moments with the person um, to whom they belong. If you have someone in your life who left you feeling loved, cared for, just for a sip of time even, loved, cared for, seen, heard, acknowledged, safe, emotionally safe, really consider somehow letting that person know. Whatever your preferred method may be, it may be a handwritten note or card or a gift with a quick little something, do that. Take a moment today or put it on your calendar and, and count it as an appointment and a non-negotiable, you know, non-changeable appointment. Consider doing that. I have to do that. I create appointments on the calendar for all different kinds of things, including myself. But I create appointments on the calendar to handle things like that. Sending love, sending encouragement, sending a thank you. And it's not cheap stuff. It's the, this specific thing was really important to me. This specific thing left me feeling loved. This specific thing left me feeling cared for. Supported safe, unjudged, which is safe. Uh, it built up great trust in my heart for you. Thank you. Consider doing that, okay? And if you're looking for a specialist, you know, I have a few that I will definitely recommend. And you know why? I recommend, there are some great people in the world and I don't, I don't take away from that. But when I know that a specialist is regularly practicing their own Grief recovery method, recovery work, taking those actions for themselves, those are the ones I recommend. And I have a few that uh, if you don't want to work with me, that's perfectly fine. I can point you in the direction of people who I know not only get the, the tools and information who will guide you well, but I believe that they'll guide you differently and to a, a greater depth and I would say um, greater quality because they use the tools regularly on themselves, regularly and correctly the way they were intended. So if you're curious um, about that list of people, look at me moving my hair behind my ear. Why do I do that? So it's just a habit. Like when you get a new car, you put the car, you go to put the car and drive up here, but now the new car has it down here. I don't, it's just a thing. I don't, it's so funny. Anyway, y'all, I love you. Go spread love. Share those moments that were important to you. And if you can't do it directly, let me know so I can help you do it indirectly in a way that leaves you feeling complete, finished, versus feeling incomplete. Like you've got unfinished emotional business. Shoot, shoot, I didn't deliver it. I can't. I ran out of time. I missed my moment. Hey, guess what? That's a grief moment. That conflicting spot right there um, causes you grief or a buildup of weighty heaviness in your heart. So I can help you, even if you can't deliver these messages. Um, maybe you have someone who's alive, who's suffering with Alzheimer's or dementia. So you have this, this powerful, precious message to deliver, but you know they can't receive it. I can help you with that. That's, that's part of my specialty here. All right, y'all? So I'm going to use the neti pot and figure out how to clear out the sinus problem. But if you have thoughts, wonders, and questions, you let me know. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. I love your questions and your thoughts. And also thank you for hearing some of mine. I hope they make an impact in your life in some way and in a, in a positive way, hopefully, and in a way that you become impactful in a positive way for someone else. I love you and I'll see you next time. Bye everybody.